welcome to chemical reaction engineering laboratory today we are going to perform the experiment using a single plug flow reactor which is also called as tubular flow reactor okay it is nothing but a pipeline a long pipeline in which we will sending the inlet uh, that is a reactants in one end and the products in the other end okay so the aim of this experiment is to carry out the saponification of ethyl acetate with NaOH in a tubular flow reactor or plug flow reactor and to determine the rate constant of the reaction which is ethyl acetate plus NaOH forming sodium acetate and ethanol. Okay, so for this reaction, so what is the rate constant? We will be determining using the data to be obtained in a plug flow reactor. Okay. Well, coming to this theory part of this experiment, plug flow reactor is an idealized flow reactor. It flows such that along the direction of the flow, all the reaction mixtures are moving along at the same speed and there is no back mixing or there is no back flow taking place along the direction of the fluid flow. Okay, That means the contents in the plug flow reactor, they flow like a disciplined set of students moving in as assembly okay so just like when, when ground parade is there so a set of people it's like one row they keep moving front the another row follow them there is no back making of the student okay so the same thing is taking place here the fluids do not back mix or there is no mixing okay so one layer of fluid as a disc will be moving from left inlet to the right outlet okay on the other hand the reaction mixture is well mixed just like that in a batch reactor within the each plug or we can say on the cross section of the plane there is well mixing is taking place whereas along the direction of the fluid flow there is no mixing taking place. So that you can see in this animation where you can see each fluid set can be called as a pack of fluid or a plug of fluid so which moves from the left to the right that is from the inlet to the outlet section. Okay, so this idealization makes this type of reactor that is plug flow reactor helps us for analysis can be simplified extremely and now this one can treat this plug flow reactor as a one dimensional flow reactor. So this plug flow reactor takes the assumption or the for ideal plug flow reactor the basic assumption is it is an one dimensional flow reactor. And the, in the ideal plug flow reactor, the theoretical detention time is same as measured or actual detention time where V is the volume of the reactor and Q is the volumetric flow rate. Okay, So the detention time, theoretical detention time is equal to actual detention time for a plug flow reactor. Okay, so If you look at the application where these type of plug flow reactors are used, one of the industrial application is 
biological treatment using plug flow reactor technology you can see that in this case in an ideal plug flow reactor there should not be any longitudinal mixing and thus the particles should emerge from the reactor outlet point in the same sequence in which they enter as i told it is a very disciplined uh, fluid particle enter like a pack so one pack of fluid will be leaving okay so there will be only radial direction mixing so there will be only radial mixing taking place okay along the axis there is no mixing there is no back mixing so efficient performance of this type of plug flow reactor can be ensured because there is absence of dead zones there is no short circuiting there is no inadequate mixing which are count, counted in cstr type of reactors okay so these ideal reactors can avoid these undesired phenomena but anyhow practical reactors are hardly ideal reactors so that's why this type of short circuiting will result high temperature difference with dead zones okay because some part of the reactor will be remaining unutilized and largely result from flow pattern and poor reactor space design okay so that way this plug flow reactor may be either tubular type with closed channels or in the form of long rectangular open channels okay so either it can, it can operate it at open channel or closed channel open channel means it's not fluid is not flowing throughout the cross section of the reactor only a portion is um, filled with water it's like partially filled flow is there that means always uh, above the liquid layer we have atmospheric pressure operating on it okay so in this type of uh, biological treatment we first take the raw water some equalization and neutralization basin is there which will pump the uh, raw waste water to plug flow reactor so then we are going to have a settling tank okay so there all the slurry will be collected from the bottom and disposed and we will get some clean treated water from the top okay so these plug flow reactors are continuous type of reactors advantages associated with our we are going to have high conversion with it we are going to have high conversion with this type of plug flow reactor in comparison to cstr and we are having a high volumetric unit conversion this plug flow reactors have a high volumetric unit conversion run for long periods of time without maintenance so the operation cost is going to be less because there is no less maintenance required during the operation that way the operation expenditure is less and it can run for long period without requiring any maintenance and if you look at the heat transfer rate we can easily optimize this by using more thinner tubes or fewer thicker tubes in parallel okay so that way this design is compact in design it doesn't occupy more space and the limitation associated with this plug flow reactor is Uh, temperature is uh, very difficult to control which makes the uh, operation maintenance uh, difficult so we have some high maintenance cost associated with this one okay when you want to repair it has to be stopped all this thing has to be done okay and so it can be used for homogeneous reactions heterogeneous reactions so it plug flow reactors used for continuous operation or continuous production and if you want to operate it at high temperature uh, you can perform this use this plug flow reactor okay so the limitations as i told you the temperature control is poor in plug flow reactors so we are going to have undesired thermal gradients will be existing in the system and shutting down and cleaning these pipes long pipes will be expensive okay coming to apparatus this experimental setup is actually a combined flow reactor where we have a plug flow reactor and a cstr nearby okay so there is a, a, a setup that the outlet of this one of the reactor can be sent as the inlet to the other reactor okay so thereby we can perform that later so that we are going to do in another lab session so today what we are going to perform is we will only use the one part of the setup that is we won't use the cstr we are going to make use of only plug flow reactor okay so what we we have essentially is we are having two reactant so there is two inlet so we have two inlet so two tubes are connected and that outlet that inlet will be provided by the two peristatic pump 
which is connected to the feed tank A and peristatic pump B which is connected to feed tank B. It is similar to the setup which we have shown in the last lab. In the back side, we are having two tanks, feed tank A and feed tank B. Feed tank A is filled with NaOH and feed tank B is filled with ethyl acetate. Okay. Now, and through tubes, this peri through the peristatic pump, the inlet is coming up to here. Apparatus and chemicals required. So to start with, for batch reactors, we prepared a small amount of uh, 0.1 normal NaOH and 0.1 normal ethyl acetate. Okay, but for continuous reactors, we need to prepare more amount. So we prepared around 5 liters of ethyl acetate 0.1 normal, NaOH 0.1 normal. Okay, so then we need for titration purpose, we used 0.1 normal HCl, 0.05 normal NaOH, that is for titration purpose and it needs to be filled in the burette and for standardization we have used 0.1 normal oxalic acid okay and for collecting the samples from the reactors we have a 25 ml and 10 ml um, measuring jars and we are going to use phenolphthalein indicator 2 m two drops and we will be taking 0 0.05 burette so we fill up to the zero So we use 3 250 ml conical flask to which we are going to add HCl solution. Okay, so what we will do is we will add 20 ml of HCl solution to 3 beakers and keep ready. Then add two drops of phenolphthalein indicator. Okay, so once this is ready, we can go and start the reactions. Okay, so this can be kept away as already we have taken. So this HCl is filled in the conical flask, and that point not five. Uh, Normal NaOH is filled in the burette. Phenolphthalein indicator is added. Okay, so we will start the experiment. We will fill NaOH in the feed tank on. and we fill with a state in feed tank 2. And before starting, we will close this. So after filling this, we have to switch on the peristatic pump so in the control panel what we will do is we will switch it on and we we'll switch on the peristatic pump here and set an rpm of 60 rpm so we should know what is the conversion to liters per hour right so 1 rpm is equal to 0.15 liters per hour so this we have to make use and the volume of the plug flow reactor is working volume is 0.98 liters. So, first initially there will be air bubbles because we are starting from scratch. So, we have to ensure. And once you switch on and setting it, we will switch on that stopwatch. So all the air bubbles has to leave. So what you will see is after steady, we have to start the timer after this liquid start coming. So maybe it will take 10 to 15 minutes. So after that, we will wait for steady state of 5 to 10 minutes. So I repeat, 
we have to wait for the product stream to come out of this pfr because we have seen u1 rpm is equal to 0.15 liters per hour we have kept 60 rpm so it's going to take certain time for the product stream to come out of the reactor okay so once when the product stream comes out we will wait for 5 to 10 minutes for steady state to attain you can see the product stream started coming okay so we will be collecting our sample after 10 minutes okay for a steady state of 5 to 10 minutes we will start collecting the sample You can see since we kept a very high flow rate, we attained this within one minute. Okay, so we'll wait for another 10 minutes to get the steady state values. Okay, that steady state we will collect the sample. Remember, in a plug flow reactor, with respect to time, the composition of the product stream will not change. Okay, after steady state is attained, that's why we are waiting for steady state to attain. Unlike in batch reactor, with respect to time, if you collect the sample, the concentration will be different. But in plug flow reactor, the concentration of the product stream will be the same at the exit. Okay. It may be changing along the plug flow reactor, but it will not change at the end of the plug flow reactor. Okay. You should ensure no air bubbles are there in the tube. So what is happening? We have pump A which is pumping fluid A that is NaOH to the PFR and we have pump B which is pumping from the feed tank to ethyl acetate. Okay. So both RPM we kept same, one is to one ratio we are sending in. So we have opened the valve corresponding to plug flow reactor setup only. So the other valve should be kept in closed position. Okay. So we are sending in here, so this is the inlet section, so from the bottom, so the reactants are flowing through the plug flow reactor and the product string is coming. Okay, after 10 minutes, we have to collect 10 ml of sample from the plug flow reactor. After collecting the sample, we will switch off the pumps. Actually, we have to collect three times the sample so that you get a concordant value during the titration. So once you switch off that, switch off the main switch also and we will go to perform the titration. Uh, ready, 3, 2, 1. So we have collected 10 ml sample from the plug flow reactor after the steady state is attained at a particular RPM of 60 RPM. So now we are titrating it against 0 0.05 normal NaOH.
So once the permanent pale pink color has attained, we have to stop the reaction. Now the color is permanent. After completing the titration number one, we will switch on the pump again. So to peristatic pump, we are going to change the RPM to, earlier we had 60, this time we will set another value of around 70 RPM in both pumps. We have to start the stopwatch. Okay, so it's 10 minutes now. We are going to collect the sample one from the beaker corresponding to 60 RPM. Wait for 10 minutes. So after 10 minutes, the value corresponding to 70 RPM will be collecting 10 ml of sample from the product stream. I will collect the first name, first question. first much is same so after we have waited for 10 minutes so the value corresponding to 70 rpm we will collect now from the exit stream 10 ml we have to collect even if you collect little more we can discard it before doing the titration we will switch off the peristatic pump 1 and 2 and switch on the switch off the main switch also so then go to perform the titration now show 10 ml and you have to titrate it against any of us using the HCl solution. Refill the burette with NaOH 0 0.5, 0 0.05 normal NaOH once 0 level. Second titration we are going to do corresponding to 70 rpm. So once we add this 10 ml reaction mixture with 20 ml HCl and two drops of phenolphthalein. We titrate it against 0 0.05 normal NaOH. So we have to keep shaking the mixture. So permanent pale pink color is attained. Note down the end point. Okay, so note down the readings in the tabular column observation table so we have completed 60 rpm and 70 rpm next 80 rpm we will perform We will start the third set of reading for 80 RPM. First switch on the main, then switch on the peristatic pump and set the values for 80 RPM. Remember the higher the flow rate, the liquid is going to flow at the faster rate. So it will take certain time for the product to come. So we will wait for a steady state of 10 minutes. So after 10 minutes, we will collect the sample. You so have to start the stopwatch and wait for 10 minutes so we will wait for 10 minutes so we have waited for 10 minutes now we collect 10 ml of sample from the product stream and we have to take three times so we will collect 10 ml 
enamel three times and then peristatic pump and switch off the main and start the titration and before starting the titration again refill the burette with 0 0.05 normal NaOH solution up to 0 level and add the 10 ml sample collected to the third conical flask and titrate it against NaOH solution and note down the end point. The end point is appearance of permanent pale pink color. So that's a perfect end point. Now down the values. Okay, so we have completed the titration part. We have noted down the three end points. Remember, each experiment is performed three times to have a concordant value of end point. So then we will proceed for calculation. Okay. Dear students, welcome to the observation and calculation part for this experiment. Now for the observation part, first we need to standardize sodium hydroxide and HCl. For this we will be needing volume of oxalic acid which is taken to be 10 ml, normality of oxalic acid which is given to be 0.1 normal, volume of NaOH rundown which is 20 ml. In this way, we can find out the normality of NaOH. Similarly, we can find out the normality of HCl by utilizing the volume of HCl taken and the volume of sodium hydroxide run down. Once this has been used, now we have to plot the observation table. As you can see here in the observation table, we are going to consider three flow rates. So, for this, Fa and Fb here is nothing but the flow rate of sodium hydroxide and ethylene acetate reactant. This is expressed in liters per hour as in LPH. So, V0 here is nothing but the summation of the flow rates of the sodium hydroxide and ethylene acetate which is again expressed in liters per hour. So, once we have V0 with us, we can then find out the space time. How do we do that? The space time is nothing but the volume of the reactor. Here it will be the volume of the PFR divided by V0. Okay. So, volume of the reactor for that we will need the diameter of the PFR which is expressed as D and length of the PFR expressed as L. So, then the volume of the PFR can be taken out. Okay, then we have the titration values. So once we have this, then we have to calculate the concentration of sodium hydroxide in the exit stream and also find out the reaction rate constant. Okay, so how do we do that? We will go to the next slides. For this, as I said, the total volumetric flow rate will be nothing but the summation of the flow rate of reactant A and B. Here A is sodium hydroxide and B is ethylene acetate. So, this should be same as the steady state flow rate measured at the reactor exit. Okay. Then I said the space time. The space time will be nothing but total volume divided by the volumetric flow rate. So, here V capital V is nothing but the volume of the PFR. Then the concentration of sodium hydroxide in the outlet stream. So, that is given by V1 into N1 minus V3 into N3 divided by V2. This is expressed in gram mole per liter. Now, please uh, consider that we have to use or find out the volumetric flow rate or the space time or the concentration of sodium hydroxide and also the initial concentration for each flow rate. So, here we are considering three flow rates. So, we have to find out these values for all the three flow rates. Okay. So, V1 here is nothing but the volume of HCl taken in the conical flux. N1 is the normality of the HCl taken in the conical flux. V3 is the titration value. N3 is the normality of sodium hydroxide taken in burette. V2 is the volume of the sample added to the conical flux for titration. So, in this way we can find out the Ca value. So, we also 
have to find out Ca0 to find out Xa, right? So, Ca0 is the initial concentration of sodium hydroxide in the input stream. So, this is given by Fa into Na divided by Fe plus Fb, okay? So, again, we have the conversion rate. So, conversion is Xa is nothing but 1 minus Ca by Ca0. So, for three different flow rates, we are going to get three different space time, concentration of sodium hydroxide, initial value and the concentration at the exit stream. In this way, we have to obtain them. Okay. So, once we do that, now we need to evaluate K. That is the reaction rate constant. Now, we know that for assuming the reaction rate, we have to assume it to be minus Ra is equals to K into Ca square, right? So, uh, in this way, we can get the performance equation. So, the performance equation is and will be in the form 1 by Ca is equals to K into tau plus 1 by Ca0, right? So, this is nothing but in the form of Y is equals to Mx plus C, okay? Where Y is 1 by Ca, M is K, right? And plus C, so C is 1 by Ca0. So, we have to plot 1 by Ca versus tau and check for a straight line fit. So, this slope of this plot will give us the reaction rate constant. So, in this way, we can find out the reaction rate constant graphically. Okay. So, once you find out this graphically, we, you also have to find out your reaction rate constant experimentally. How do you do that? We can see in the next slide. So, in the next slide, as you can see, the concentration of sodium hydroxide in the exit stream is given by this formula V1N1 minus V3 entry by V2, right? Then the reaction rate constant is given by 1 by Ca1 minus 1 by Ca0 by tau, right? In this way, you can find out the reaction rate constant experimentally. So, for three flow rates, you are going to get the reaction rate constant. Then the conversion, right? So, once you find out this reaction rate constant experimental values, you need to find average them out, okay, to find out the average K, okay? And you have the graphical value also with you. You need to compare both, okay? Once you do that, you have to give this in the result and conclusion part. So, in the result and conclusion part, you need to report the value of K, Okay, and then which has been determined experimentally as well as graphically. Also, you have to give a good conclusion where you need to discuss how the space time changes with variation in the flow rate. Okay, and also with changes in flow rate, what are the parameters which are changing? This needs to be discussed. So, for readings for practice, you have been given these values. Okay, so you need to consider these values and calculate and then give the result and conclusion and submit the report. We can summarize that in this experiment, we have demonstrated the reaction rate constant of a plug flow reactor or in short PFR. So, we have determined the value of the reaction rate constant on the basis of the plug flow model for the saponification of ethyl acetate in the tubular flow assembly. We have also studied the performance of PFR in terms of conversion of reactant with respect to varying reactor volume and feed flow rates. So, dear students, this is all for this experiment. Thank you so much for joining Lion Raj Mohan Sir's classroom. We shall meet you again in the next experiment. Thank you and bye. We sincerely acknowledge the contributions of Dr. Vidya Sagar, Dr. Manogar and Dr. Ramya for the infrastructure development in this CRE laboratory and we also thank our previous HODs, Professor Sarad Babu, Professor Sirishwanavani and our current HOD, our dear Dr. Srinath.